Okay, good day, good morning. This is the pre-calculus snow day lesson for 4.6. I am Mr. McCulley. Uh, I hope you guys are all staying warm. I'm still fighting a cold, so uh, if uh, I have to stop and blow my nose, I apologize for that in advance. But as this is a snow day, um, it is kind of one way. So if you have any questions, please feel free to email me at natmcculley at omarisa.net. And I will try and get back with it and with you and or if we have uh, additional snow days, um, I will answer questions from emails that I get from students via this video. So let's get to it. We are talking about section 4.6 and our learning goals are to graph the sketch the graphs of tangent functions, cotangent functions, secant and cosecant functions, and then uh, Probably not in this particular video lesson because I'm going to try and keep it under 20 minutes if I can. Um, of damped trig nometric functions. That'll be a second lesson later on. So some just a little bit of new information. We went over graphing functions yesterday. Um, finished up trig functions. And I just want to go over just there's not a whole lot of new stuff that you need to learn that we didn't already have in the sine and cosine functions. So this lesson is only adding the other four trig functions because tangent, cotangent, cosecant, and secant have the possibility of divisions by zero that cannot be reduced. There are vertical asymptotes and tangent and cotangent have no amplitude and they really have only a true period of pi units. Now that being said, I am not going to change the process. So we're actually for tangent and cotangent going to be graphing four periods. That way we keep our process the same for all six trig functions when we go to graph. So just a real quick review. This method does not change uh, regardless of trig functions. And we are going to graph two full periods. So first thing we are going to find is the amplitude. And I think I suppose I should go back here and say, um, Tangent and cotangent have uh, no amplitude. So when we go to draw them, there will be something that we will discuss that deals with that. Uh, find the period, and we'll make our quarter turn divisions, just like we did with sine and cosine. If bx minus c has a c equal to 0, then we graph the two periods starting at the origin, just like we did. And then if, excuse me, <coughs> um, if bx minus c has a c something other than 0, we're going to set bx minus c equal to 0 and bx minus c equal to 2 pi and solve for x for those. And those are the starting points of the new end period of the first period. And then we'll plug in points along the period and draw our curve. So let's start with tangent x. And I'm doing tangent x because um, it, it is a fairly simple one, and I have a simple unit circle to uh, give us kind of a guide of how we're going to draw those values in. And again, for tangent x, um, there is no amplitude. And uh, so our period is still going to be 2 pi. And I know I just said that the tangent only has a period of 1 pi, and you will see that, but we're still going to draw it the same way. And so I'm going to come through and I'll put off my first, there's my first period at 2 pi. My second period, same way, is now going to be 4 pi, 2 pi away. I divide that into half, that'll give me pi. I'll divide this into um, half, that's pi over 2. And then I'll divide this again into half, and that'll give me 3 pi over 2. I'll divide the second period into quarters, just like we did another one. We're dividing or counting by pi over 2. So 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2 reduces down to 3 pi over 2. Or no, excuse me, I made a, made a mistake. 6 pi over 2 reduces down to 3 pi. 7 pi over 2 and then 8 pi over 2 is 4. All right, so we remember that tangent x is equal to the sine of x over the cosine of x. 
All right, so we start at zero on our x-axis, and we'll label correctly so we don't lose any points. And so I start at zero. So zero on my unit circle is right here. Just trying to keep a general idea of what we got there. And at zero, the sine is zero, and the cosine is one. So zero over one is one. As I move from 0 up here to 2 pi, or pi over 2, as I move up there to pi over 2, cosine goes to 0 and sine goes to 1. So at pi over 2, I have 1 over 0. That's a division by 0. That is undefined. So I end up with a vertical asymptote there. All right, and I then have two options because there's no other zeros here. There's no other value for sine in this first quadrant that is equal to zero. So it can't cross the x-axis again. So it either has to start here and go up or start here and go down. Well, in the first quadrant, both sine and cosine are positive. And we know that positive divided by positive is a positive value. So since every value from 0 to pi over 2 is positive, it has to go up like this. All right. Now, we've graphed from 0 to pi over 2. We're now going to graph from 0, or excuse me, from pi over 2 to pi. Well, what happens at pi? Well, at pi, sine is 0 and cosine is negative 1. 0 divided by negative 1 is 0. So we have that. And again, there's no other value for sine from pi over 2 to pi that's equal to 0, so it never crosses the x-axis again. So the only two options is it can come down from the top and hit 0 at pi, or come up from the bottom and hit 0 at pi. Now in the second quadrant, the x values are negative, so the cosines are negative, and the sines are all positive. So positive divided by a negative is going to give me a negative. So all of the values from pi over 2 to pi are negative. Therefore, it has to start at the bottom and come up to the top. All right. From pi to 3 pi over 2 is this portion of the graph. There's my 3 pi over 2. And again, at 3 pi over 2, the sine is negative 1 and the cosine is 0. So again, we have a <coughs> excuse me, we have another division by 0, which is going to cause us to have a vertical asymptote. Now, in the second or in this third quadrant, both sine and cosine are negative and we when we go negative divided by a negative we get a positive so in this last this next quadrant my graph has to stay positive so it has to draw be drawn like that and then finally from 3 pi over 2 up to 2 pi 0 there the Sine val or the cosine's values are positive and the sine values are negative. And since that we have a negative divided by a positive, we get a negative. So the graph from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi has to look like that. And now we've completed what we've so far called one period. And we can clearly see that it starts repeating at pi. So our period is pi units. But we're still going to draw it the same way just to keep some consistency so I can repeat what I've already drawn and then every pi units put a set of vertical asymptotes and finish drawing this one in as such and there we go looks good all right Again, if you have questions, you can email me or we can talk about it in our next class. All right, let's talk about secant. Now, we're going to do secant very similar to the way that we did the other one. 
And we remember that secant is really 1 over cosine x. And as I said, there is no amplitude, but we can use that amplitude to give us a general idea of uh, how to graph this. And in this case, we're going to, again, we're going to have possibility of divisions by 0 because we're going to have 1 over a 0. Cosine is 0 at pi over 2 and at negative pi over 2. So we're going to have undefined there. But the numerator is never going to be 0 because it's always going to be 1 over cosine. So this is always going to be 1. So we're never going to have any x-intercepts for a secant function. All right. So even though we don't have uh, an amplitude, we can use that as a guideline. We can use that, and it's not negative 1, it's going to be equal to 1, because I have that 1 in front there. So I'm still going to use 1 and negative 1 as some guidelines here. Our period is still going to be uh, 2 pi, and we're just doing an easy one, and that b value is 1, so 2 pi over 1 is going to give us that 2 pi. And so since we have no left-right shifts, we'll start at 0. And our first period will be 2 pi. And then another period will be 4 pi. And so we graph it, uh, or we break it up a similar way. We cut that 2 pi in half. That gives me pi. Dif cut that in half. That'll give me pi over 2. Cut the difference between pi and 2 pi in half. That's 3 pi over 2. And then doing similar motions. 1 pi over 2, 2 pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 4 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 6 pi over 2 is 3 pi, 7 pi over 2 doesn't reduce, and 8 pi over 2 reduces to 4 pi. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. So, at 0. So we're starting here. Again, on the unit circle, I'm just using this as a visual aid. So at 0, uh, cosine is 1. 1 divided by 1 is 1. All right. Then as we go to 2 pi, or pi over 2, I don't know why I keep saying that, I apologize. So pi over 2, at pi over 2, cosine is 0. So I get 1 over 0, now I have a vertical asymptote. And again, this fraction can never be 0. So my graph can never cross the x-axis, it's never 0. So the only possibility is for this thing to go up, and we can guarantee that because we know that in the first quadrant, cosine, all the cosine values are positive. And so it has to stay positive. All right. Then as we go from pi over 2 to pi, cosine goes to negative 1. So when we're here, the cosine of x is negative 1 at pi. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So at pi, we have negative 1. And again, it can never cross the x-axis. So it can't come down here and cross this x-axis. It has to come up from the bottom and go to touch there. And we also have another verification of this because in the second quadrant, the cosine values are all negative. So it has to be negative values. Now, as I go from pi to 3 pi over 2, right here, 3 pi over 2, at 3 pi over 2, the cosine is 0 again. So again, I end up with a horizontal asymptote right here. And again, in this quadrant, the cosine values are all negative. And it never crosses the x-axis, so it has to go down like this. Finally, as I go from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, the cosine values become positive again. And so, and also at 2 pi, cosine is 1, so I get 1 over 1, that's positive 1. So here, I get positive 1 at 2 pi. And it doesn't cross the x-axis, and the cosines are positive, so it has to come down and hit. And now we know enough that we can make some repeats. Every... Make sure I do this right. 
yeah, we're good. So like this. And down here. Like that. And then we're done. Okay, so for our first example, we are going to do page 311, number 120. We're going to go to... Uh, secant 4 pi plus 2. So a couple things we have to think about here is first, again, we do not have an amplitude per se. But knowing that there's a 2 in front of there does allow us to get a uh, upper and lower value that we can use. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, our period still stays the same. We're going to go uh, uh, 2 pi divided by 4, and I think I have a slight little error that I want to fix here. Um, this thing should be an X. There we go. I feel, ooh, that's weird. I'm going to get rid of this one. There we go. Now I feel better. There we go. So our uh, period is still going to be 2 pi divided by 4 which will give us pi over 2. And then we have a vertical shift of 2 units up. All right, so let's get this thing knocked out here quick. Since it's a vertical shift 2 units up, our center line, which is what we had for the tangent and the secant, is going to move up 2 units. So I'm just going to kind of draw one uh, a new ish center line here at we're going to call it two and then two units above that because of my quote unquote amplitude will be four and below that will be zero all right so <coughs> even though our period is pi over two we're still going to mark it kind of the same way pi over two is our first period our second period is uh, let's see here so 0 pi over 2 plus another pi over 2 would just be pi. We divide that into quarters halfway between 0 and pi over 2 would be pi over 4. And then halfway between 0 and pi over 4 would be pi over 8. We'll break this one up into quarters as well. And let's just count through. So I've got from 0 to pi over 8 is 1 pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8 doesn't reduce. 4 pi over 8 reduces to pi over 2. 5 pi over 8 does not reduce. 6 pi over 8 reduces to 3 pi over 4. 7 pi over 8 does not reduce. And 8 pi over 8 reduces to pi. All right, that's good. All right, so let's remember that y equals uh, 2 secant 4x plus 2 is the same as 2 times 1 over uh, the cosine of 4x plus 2. And so let's plug in 0. The cosine of 0 is 1. 1 over 1 is 1. Uh, times 2 is going to be 2. Plus 2 is 4. So at 0, I have, I'm have i plotting 4. At pi over 8, pi over 8 times 4 is 4 pi over 8, which is pi over 2. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So I have a vertical asymptote right here at pi over 8. Okay, so how do I draw that? Well, again, from 0 to pi over 8, cosine will be positive. All those values will be positive. So I'm going to draw that thing. Oops, let's use the correct color. I'm going to draw that up there like that. All right, at... Um, pi over 4, cosine, uh, pi over 4 times 4 is going to be pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1, and negative 1, uh, 1 over negative 1 is negative 1, times 2 is negative 2, plus 2 is 0. So at pi over 4, I have a 0 graph there. And then from pi over 8 to 4, pi over 4, cosine will be negative, so I'm going to get a graph that looks like that. Plotting the next one as I go to 3 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8 times 4 will be 
3 pi over 2. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 1 divided by 0 is 0, so I get another undefined. So we'll get a, another vertical asymptote. And just because we've been going so far so fast, or it's taken us a while, a little longer than I had hoped to do this, I'm just going to draw in the remaining asymptotes. We can see that since it's a periodic function, it's going to be every um, pi over 2 units here pi over 4 units, sorry. And we're going to continue to draw this in. And again, 3 pi over 8 times pi over 4, or times 4, 3 pi over 8 times 4 is going to be 3 pi over 2. The cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. That's why I have this undefined. From pi over 4 to 3 pi over 8, cosine will be negative. So this graph has to go down like this. And so now we see basically the, the shape that it's going to come up. So we are just going to draw in what we already know. So this graph has to go like this. And then it has to draw like that. It has to draw like this. And there we go. Y-axis. Got our x-axis. All right, last one. All right, so here, our last one, page 311, number 34, y equals a half cosecant 2x minus pi. This we have a c value that is not equal to zero, so we have another extra step. But again, there is no amplitude, but we can use that one half as a guide. My period is going to go uh, from 2 pi divided by 2, which is just pi. And there is no vertical shift. There is horizontal shift. And so we have to find new endpoints. So I'm going to go 2x minus pi equal to 0 and 2x minus pi equal to 2 pi. So I end up with 2x equaling uh, positive pi gives me x equals pi over 2. And then this one I'll get 2x equals 3 pi and then x equals 3 pi over 2. So those are my two uh, new endpoints. And again, if I subtract 3, three pi um, over 2 minus pi over 2, I get 2 pi over 2, which is pi. So my period is good. I'm happy with that. All right, I don't want that kind of a line. There's no up, down, shift. There's no vertical, vertical shift. So I'm going to start here at half. I'll start here at negative one half. Those will be my values. I want to go. Here's my first pi over two. Here's my new first endpoint three pi over two, and then another pi units would be another two pi over two units, which would be pi over five. And so halfway between pi over two and three pi over two. Well. Pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2 is 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi, divided by 2, which would be pi. And then pi over 2 plus 2 pi over 2 would be 3 pi over 2, divided by 2 would be 3 pi over 4. So let's divide up into quarters here. And so this would be 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 4 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4. 6 pi over 4 reduces to 3 pi over 2. 7 pi over 4 does not reduce. 8 pi over 4 is just 2 pi. 9 pi over 4. And then 10 pi over 4. Ah, you guys probably all saying, hey, McCulley, you made a mistake there. I probably said it right. I wrote it wrong. So this should have been 5 pi over 2. That's giving me a 10 pi over 2. And again, you can use that. You can check yourself when you, you can see that you make mistakes. And I'm using all of these guides to make sure I'm doing these things right. All right, so let's finish this out. Remember that this expression is going to be y equals 1 half times 1 over the sine of let's see, 2x minus pi. All right. Let's knock this out here quick. So pi over 2, pi over 2 times 2 is pi, minus pi is 0. The sine of 0 is 0, so we are going to start this first one with a vertical asymptote. 
Yeah, division by zero. All right. All right, 3 pi over 4. 3 pi over 4 times 2 is 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 minus pi is pi over 2, which is good. The sine of pi over 2 is 1. And then 1 over 1 is 1 times a half is a half. So we have a half there. And again, this fraction is never going to be equal to 0, so it never crosses the x-axis. And since sine is always positive in the first quadrant, we know we can draw in like this. Pi. Pi times 2 is 2 pi. Minus pi is pi. The sine of pi is 0. So again, we have a vertical asymptote. I don't like that really fat dotted line, so I'm going to make it a little smaller. And obviously, we're going to have vertical asymptotes every pi over 2 units. So we'll add those in here. And let's finish it out. So from uh, 3 pi over 4 to pi, the sine values would be in the second quadrant. And the sine values in the second quadrant are all positive. And again, this fraction can never be 0. From pi to pi over 5 pi over 4, at 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4 times 2 is 5 pi, excuse me, times 2 is 5 pi over 2, minus pi will be 3 pi over 2. The sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So 1 over negative 1 is negative 1 times a half is negative a half. So I'm right there. And I can clearly see that I'll draw the rest of that particular graph like that. And we've completed one full period. So we can repeat our period, our second period, to make it look like a good periodic function. Label our x and y axis and we are finished. All right. Well, I know that went longer than the 20 minutes I promised at the beginning, but we are finished. I hope you have a good day. See you in class.